Hi, everyone. Uh, so this is the final stage of the Workshop Plus competition event called Metaverse Gameum Virtual Assets. So um, we're here with uh, three jury members that we will introduce uh, in a minute. Uh, but before that, let's introduce how the what the whole workshop was about so the jury can understand it uh, in a deeper manner and then how much time they had to produce what they had to produce Bamsi? yeah so um welcome again guys and uh, this what we see here is the results of metaverse gamium workshop which was uh, launched in collaboration with metaverse uh, gamium gamium corp and uh, it's basically a virtual asset creation workshop like eric mentioned and we are focused on um, a two weekend workshop, which was taught by Irfan Bakrani, our instructor, which was a four plus four hours, eight hours a day workshop last weekend. And then the participants have had until Friday midnight to create their designs. So through the process, what Irfan did was he showed them how to create these amazing pieces. So they had uh, the opportunity to learn from scratch on how they can work with a high-rise structure, uh, a mid-rise structure, and also work with uh, a lot of fluidic elements in the whole process. So the primary source of uh, the, the base software for the workshop is Maya. And all the works that you see are primarily produced through Maya. And uh, that's why we have also brought in you guys uh, who are the experts when it comes to working with fluidity and Maya. And so today, um, we have three guest critiques. We have Mariana Cabaguera, uh, Miroslav Naskov, and Firas um, Safedine, if, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So, yeah. Safedine. Good. Safedine. 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 Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me just stop my share for a second. And uh, one thing that uh, that is really worth mentioning is that we um, asked the students uh, or the participants to produce their own original works and not replicate what's in the workshop. So that's very important to say. Uh, so while it would be super easy for them to just follow the exact steps and produce high quality results, uh, they had to push through their own touch. Uh, and some of them were using Maya for the first time. So you can imagine like they had to master the language and the technical side of things as well. So please judge accordingly. Uh, also uh, for the jury, we have sent you uh, Google Sheets. Uh, please check them out. Uh, that's for you to vote on each project. But, and then for each project, uh, basically in the beginning, there will be no voting. What we will do is just go through each project and maybe you can give very blitz feedback like what could have been better or something like that. So very short, right? Like one or two minutes each. So we can ask, uh, tell the participants how they could have improved the model. And then, so, and this is for you to also get an idea of overall the entries. And then we'll go through each project and then quickly vote each one. And then uh, when you vote, we will have the final averages of uh, all the votes and we'll publicly have it real time and uh, in the end, we'll announce the winners. Uh, and the prizes, uh, if we wanna go over this one more time. So let me just quickly share my screen. So the first prize is a uh, thousand euros worth uh, Gamium tokens. And then they also get a Gamium land, uh, a parcel land where uh, they could add their own uh, projects or just populated with whatever they want. And then they also get a Futurely Plus membership access for 90 days. And then the winner the NFT certificates uh, is also uh, rolled out for each. So, the, and the second prize is 500 worth GMM tokens without the land, but, and also 60 days access to Futurely Plus. And then the third prize is 300 worth uh, GMM tokens and 30 days access and then also whenever an NFT certificates. All the other runner-ups and everybody who we shorted, shortlisted today. So in, uh, we had about 50 submissions, but we shorted uh, them to a list of 22 that would be 
uh, basically reviewed by the jury. So, and then those, those are the runner-ups as well. So those 22 that we're gonna discuss now are the runner-ups and uh, it's not 15 anymore. It's basically 22 overall that will be getting the exclusive NFT certificate and then also have their models in the marketplace of Gamium. So we will be sending the models to the Gamium people to have it in the marketplace and we can discuss things further from there. All right, so this is about the whole workshop. Bamsi, you wanna go ahead and introduce the jury? Yeah. All right. So we have with us uh, three jury members, um, starting with Mariana Cabaguera. She is an architect and urban designer from Portugal, recently working at Zahadid Architects and teaching at the AA in London. Um, graduated from the School of Architecture in Lisbon, she moved to London to explore design and technology through postgraduate course DRL at the AA. Her research interests gravitate around generative design, parametric design, digital design, iterative design, and the evolution of technology through robotic fabrication. Her final pro uh, project proposes a cluster of towers radically different but biologically similar in the center of London. Mariana joined ZHA after graduating from the AA school. She's a part of the competition cluster ever since, responsible for high-end design projects of the office. She is involved in many tower projects for Asian countries, cultural centers, and mosques for the Middle East. Until today, four airports having won three of those and still counting. Maya Software is her everyday design tool. She never stopped teaching at the DRL. Yeah. And uh, she's also a social media star with everything she does. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this this whole introduction is feels like there was no need for it because I guess everybody in the chat knows her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Mariana, thank you. to be with us thank today. Thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure. Uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks. When next up we have Miroslav. Miroslav is a designer, visionary, and founder of Mind Design, Mind with a capital D. He pursued his Master of Architecture in Architecture and Urbanism, DRL, at the AA School of Architecture London. With a computational design background and specialization in sustainable pure design, he believes the use of cutting-edge technology and collaborative thinking is the right approach to solving problems and finding design opportunities. So thank you, Miroslav, uh, for joining us once again. It's Thank you very much for the invite. It's a pleasure for me. Fantastic. And next up, we have Firaz. Firaz, um, who is the lead architect and designer for the Gamium world. And he is a, ba a Barcelona-based designer, architect, artist, and neurotech enthusiast who coined the term electrical ecologies and aimed at designing the first architectural brain implant. Wow. He currently leads the design and building of the Gamium world metaverse establishing a precedent in the metaverse city making. He leads the Barcelona chapter of Neurotech X, operates as an editorial board member at Urban Next and a creative and tech director at Gualat Architects, designing urban scale projects across the planet. Thank you, Firaz, for once again um, coming here, joining us and uh, making this happen. Man, I mean, we made this happen together, so thanks for yeah. everyone who's here. Lovely, lovely. Great. That's um, our three jury members for today. And all three of them have their uh, sheets ready with them. And Arik, maybe we uh, go over the sheet once. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. I can open it or do you have it open? Uh, just give me a second. Let's go to, uh, and show the yeah. transparent process in the background, yes. how it will work. So this is exactly how it's going to happen, guys. What you see here is uh, a sheet of Mariana Cabaguera. As you can see, these are the shortlisted uh, members, the 22 members whose work will be showcased today. And uh, so we have the originality and creativity and the quality which are the main core criteria for today, and then added together becomes the jury average. So the criteria is one to five points. So the jury decides to give anywhere between one to five points. 
And we have another consolidated sheet where um, all these sums will be averaged out, and then that gives us the final result, which we will know by the end of the whole session. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and open the. Love how the... explicit the whole scoring is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so these are our shortlisted participants. If you don't see your name here, you either didn't get shortlisted, but most likely you also submitted late. So we didn't want this to be unfair. Uh, uh, so some people submitted a day later or even five minutes ago. So, that, <laughs> <laughs> so that's not how this is going to work because you had more time and uh, it's good to be judged fairly uh, across the whole thing and so let's go over this one more one time without voting and just uh hearing some feedback from the uh, from the juries right so we'll start with abdul menayam so here we go this is the first project that we see so uh one more thing we asked them to either do a tower or a villa-like project. So these are, or both. Some people submitted two projects, but basically uh, this is the first one. If you have any feedback, uh, please go ahead. We're just blitzing through the projects now. Uh, should we do like a one minute or something? Yeah, just, just one like minute quick each. Yeah, quick quick uh, thing, like how would you improve it and things like that. I think that um, it's really cool, especially like given the amount of time that you had. Uh, the way you blended with the podium is um, a success for me. Like you went really well. It's hard to have a tower on top of a podium. Usually it's hard to kind of match them and you kind of like um, succeeded in merging them. Maybe the podium could be a little bit higher because I can see that now this is just an illusion. It's on top of a mirror. So I would increase a bit the podium and probably like extend it out a bit more and, and it's done and uh, it's complete for me. Cool. I like the proportion of the, um, of the Y, uh, the solid part and the transparent, the glasses, I think is like a nice, uh, way and the composition is beautiful and also I think that uh, in, uh, it's uh, shown us like in a very clean uh, way so we can really assess the geometry and uh, uh, yeah I can I can say that I think this is like a good result and it is a positive start um, as a, um, a bit of critic I would say that uh, it's maybe worth thinking a, a bit of more controlling uh, the movement in the and the curve, so it's a little bit more controlled. And uh, maybe here and there we have a little bit uh, too much uh, of things going on. Otherwise, I think it's a, it's a very nice result. Exactly. Kiras, do you want to add anything? Um. Yeah, uh, I mean, really cool work. Uh, about something that you should, I mean, with with this motion, with this movement of, of the form, like some variety in the height and, and how it is constant. And usually with this kind of movement, it would be cool to see some, some variation in the radius of, of the cylinder as we go up. Uh, and I would definitely make the base more continuous and a bit higher. Uh, Firaz, maybe you want to turn off your video when you're speaking because the connection is a bit slow with you. Uh, but we heard you right this time, but uh, you can turn off the video for quicker connections. But okay. all right, thank you. <clears throat> so this is cool. So the second one uh, is Juan Manuel. And so this is it. Just, uh, I'm going to quickly blitz through this. Right, and cool. Right. So that was it for this one. Yeah. Right. So when he's not a beginner, no, he's definitely not a first timer. I mean, and if he is like this, is very successful for a first time modeling in Maya. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, By the way, so I'm really sorry. I just want to add something that uh, this is not a visualization workshop as well, right? Yeah. Uh, please critique the model and design itself and not the visualization. Uh, mm -hmm. Most people, we specifically ask them to not go crazy on visualization and presentation. Like so. Thank you. I think uh, it's cool. It's also like a bit closer to what you learn during the class. Um, but at the same time, like I like the level of resolution. Um, maybe the way I know we are not supposed to talk about the graphics, but the way you render make it look a little bit less architectural, a bit more like object type. So I'll probably give it like a bit more architectural hints, or architectural materiality probably. And the only comment on the modeling that I have to do is the bridges, because it's so easy to bridge the landscape and you could have actually taken um, the opportunity of the mesh that you had on the base and bridge the mesh instead of adding a bridge on the top of the mesh. So yes. I would definitely just go back on the bridge. The bridge is well designed, like the design of the bridge is nice, but I would just bridge the actual mesh of your landscape and you'll see how much different you will make. Now, apart from that, like really cool modeling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who is who is doing that? Is that you? I just did that to demonstrate it, but you could yeah. also annotate it yourself if you want to. Yeah. yeah. All right. Congrats on the amount of work that is done here. I think it's like for a week or less. Is like a, yeah, enormous amount of work, and you push really hard. Uh, like your curves and movements are elegant and and beautiful. Uh, again, we are not uh, uh, supposed to talk about the the visuals, but yeah, I agree that if you uh, use a little bit more neutral colors, it might help. Uh, uh, and as a suggestion, I would uh, say that, yeah, I mean, the curves and the geometries are nice, but uh, you have to think how they, uh, um, where they face uh, one another and uh, where is the connection between one another, and how they interact, like, let's say your bridge and your, uh, the pink, uh, a red uh, massive uh, podium. So in these places, it's uh, worth, in my opinion, to think how these geometries interface. Otherwise, congrats. By the way, just a quick thing, like just, uh, I just mentioned the visualization part that basically it's not a visualization workshop. Of course, presentation matters, the colors you use matters and the, the architectural expression matters of things. It's just that we're judging the design first. <laughs> Uh, just for the sake of clarity. Uh, thank you. Thank you both. Firas, if you want to add anything, please go ahead. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I definitely appreciate the, the context part of this, where the building was dropped in a context, and then the whole thing is kind of following the same style. And for the first class and learning this in Maya, congratulations. All right. Let's go to the next one. Uh, just one quick thing in this one. Uh, if you could please uh, open the same image, Arek. Uh, yes, yes. For uh, this particular model, like I see where you're going with the overall design of the uh, the, the geometries, right? Uh, you you have this sense of explosion and uh, you have this kind of a focal point, right? It would uh, it would do very well for your geometry if you would orient your buildings along the trajectory of your explosion, right? It will further enhance the emphasis on your focal point or the center where the where there's like a scoop out. On your podium level right other than that like it's a it's a very cool attempt uh, i love the gradation in the podiums i think that's a very very uh successful attempt from uh, your end so very cool congratulations with this project very nice all right jumping on to the next one uh armine sukesian let's see uh -huh. all right so quickly gonna run through it Uh, I know her personally, and it's the first time she's ever using Maya or any fluid kind of modeling. So let's see. Which one do you want me to stop on? The one with the podium, that one. This is the mini shot. Yeah. All right, yeah. Looks like this is it. Yeah. I think like so far from everything I've seen, this is the one that uh, screams metaverse more than the other ones because the other ones are a bit more traditional on the way they were designed and thought. So they were thought for the real life. And this one might be like, um an nft on its own even like a, this image on its own is like a, a bit more um it has it takes advantage of the potential of what metaverse is and i think i really appreciate that it's not like you're really pushing the boundaries of maya but at the same time you're like 
fulfilling the part of the brief that this is for Metaverse and well done for that. Awesome. Miroslav? Uh, I think like I look at, uh, congrats on the picking up the, uh, the view. So I think like this uh, as a, you know, like this kind of cinematic effect, like a movie effect from this is very strong and it's helping us to, uh, you know, to get your idea. So congrats on that. And yeah, um, I think uh, it's a nice, I like the terraces of the terrain, how it's going like, and it gives this kind of deeper effect. So like uh, it's an original idea. And of course, I think like uh, quality life wise, I think, uh, it has to be pushed a little bit more like uh, modeling and uh, design wise, but otherwise like the idea is it's cool. Yeah, I love this one. Definitely the more, most artistic so far. Um, it is the one that like takes more, more advantage from the context we're operating in, which is the metaverse. Can you go to the other renders of uh, Arek? I think you're leading this. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I really like this one as well. It looks like a creature coming to you. Really cool. Yeah, I like the first one most. Yeah, this one. Yeah. The scale is very cool of this model. Like the scale is coming through very well. You can actually feel the magnitude, right? Of the overall design. Like it dwarfs you. Like at least in the image, it, it gives the impression that it's gonna dwarf you because uh, the overall uh, impression of it. I think it's a very cool looking design. And the artistic liberty over here is very cool. I really, really appreciate that. I think the colors, everything is in sync. Also, it continues on with the, <laughs> the sky continues with the futurely colors if you just look from town to town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's true. I think purple is becoming the color of the metaverse very quickly. It's just, I don't know why that's happening. It's a very cool It's design. the cyberpunk effect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, next one is Masa Daka. And uh, let's see. So here we go. One, two, three, then this one. I guess the first one says it all. I have to stop on this. I think there's a lot going on, right? Uh, maybe, I'm not sure if I would, uh, rendering it with a material that is this glossy, I'm not sure if it helps the geometry because the geometry has a lot of bump, bumps on the road, right? So maybe I would avoid like rendering with such glossy material because it's not uh, being very <laughs> uh, flattering to, to the model. But I mean, at the same time, you're like managing a lot of complexity, which is good. It has a lot of bumps and I would kind of, focus on uh, cleaning at least one of the levels and then do the repetition, but with a clean level. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a, it's a dramatic shot and it has like a strong feeling on it. However, I agree with Mariana, you have to uh, clean a little bit the geometry and make it breathe here and there. So we have this kind of composition uh, feeling. So where somewhere we have more details, but the other way we keep the geometry to rest and to give us like a, this kind of where we have to look and where we have to, or what we have to understand about geometry, about this geometry. Yeah, that's nice. Anything to add from Irfan or Firas, or should we go ahead? Yeah, I, I really like how aggressive it is. Like, uh, it's got this. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's got this almost hostile impression, which is which is very cool. Uh, it's uh, the well, it, it it is fluid in its own sense, but uh, I also appreciate the fact that it is an attempt of making the object a bit jagged, right? Not entirely like an absolute, uh, you know, like wave-like motion. It's a it's uh, the sharp edges is enhancing the form. I think which is very cool. Uh, but like I would. Uh, yeah, I completely agree on Mariana's point where I would start with uh, a more cleaner module, right? Because this is modular in a sense, right? You are having floors that are going over each other. So before you actually uh, begin the process of the deformation, right? Or before you start 
massaging the overall model, right? The the master model, uh, I think you should clean up your mod your module first, right? So your entire system will then reflect that sort of clent up module. You won't have sort of distorted edges or faces or like an overall distorted impression, right? But other than that, like the complexity of the model is very cool. I highly appreciate it. So congratulations on this. Jumping on to the next, if Piras doesn't want to add anything. Uh, David Kasari. Yeah. Let's see, um, which one is it? There's two roads to go. Uh, is it two projects here? Let's see. Yeah, we have two. Uh, yeah, it is, yeah, David two did entries. two. So this is the low rise he did. Looks like a shell. So this is one. And uh, this is two. Let's see. Let, let me go back. I guess this was. Oh, yeah. This is the tower thing he did. So. Yeah. So should I go to the other one so we can check it out, or do we do we talk about no, each I think one? We on... can leave it on this one. Yeah. Okay. And the I'll other one it. seems like a warm up exercise. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So yeah, I so think we'll the this first one. one. Yeah, it was very Felix Candela, and I know that they can be can do better, like creativity wise. So I'm I'm gonna focus on this one. So yeah, like uh, obviously this is extremely well done and. Um, it's also that he has like a good level of Maya and it looks um, well controlled. So I'm going to comment as if, because I know you, I'm going to comment on your level. So I think that, um, you know, these extreme boxes, but I think it's very personal, but you see the squares, I'll probably fill it these corners and I would increase them totally because you have like pure squares. So I would do this filleting and instead of creasing, I would have like, two edge loops on each side. So it looks like a soft box that it being, it's being extruded. Um, I think I'll change that because it's too pointy for me and it would like benefit to be a little bit more soft on the, the actual box. And uh, yeah, but not too extreme though, but yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing to add. I think it's cool. I think maybe you should add a little bit of like uh, the same striations on the, on the side or something else on the side that kind of brings a bit more um a little bit more lights on the side as well you know this mega facade there's a point that it has like a mega solid facade maybe you could have also with some striations there but apart from that yeah well done <laughs> super cool yeah yeah well done david um it's a it's a very nice and clean model uh congrats on that also on the amount of work with the uh, not quite long time that you did uh, I agree with Mariana that I would go for uh, uh, for uh, let's say like a soft boxes, but like uh, with a really set of uh, radius. And also, uh, congrats on the what you do with the light, how you emphasize your composition, and how you give uh, detail here. It's very nice. Uh, if we stop here, another thing that I, I will do is maybe play a little bit with the height of the tower, so they're not like that people but maybe one of them might be a little bit higher and the other one maybe a little bit uh, uh, not, uh, not that low. So we have this kind of more dynamic composition, but otherwise, yeah, congrats on this. Yeah, also, can I just add something really quick, uh, like go back? Like, I don't know why, but uh, why, why are your curves like, it seems like it's not a number four. There's something a bit jaggered on some of these curves you see, like, like broken. So make needs sure a that bit you more of page up. Uh, there is a yeah. notion. <laughs> it seems like it needs like one page up. Yeah, like just a few. Like just just go on hitting it before you actually render your model. Yeah. <laughs> Eric is fixing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, like. Is it better yeah. now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a really really cool competition. 
Yeah, very nice composition. That's true. I think it's just a matter of just one more subdivision in the model. It's good that we have the model, so we can just do that before we give it to a game. <laughs> I right. think in this case, like uh, what's happened is uh, like, well, it, even in number three, your overall object should be more subdivided than this. But uh, what's cool over here is because of the same tessellation that you can see, you can tell that your model was very cleanly modeled in very low poly that in spite of subdividing, you still have these sort of, uh, you know, these uh, tessellated corners, right? So yeah, you, so you, so like in this, you do get a cue that it was a very, very clean model. Uh, over that, the, uh, like the best part about your design is the, the composition and the overall visualization that you have done to bring out the composition, right? So the lights and the accents are adding as a part of the entire master model that you have made, right? Uh, just one comment for this would be, I would activate all sides of the tar, right? Uh, as, as the previous, the jurors have said, and apart from that, also uh, a common comment to everybody that if you are doing a set of TARs, right, uh, you're doing a cluster, uh, I think you guys should definitely test out before you finalize uh, a variable height, right? Something that Miro has pointed out, right, is uh, try to stagger the heights, right? It gives it more of character. It doesn't look like a repetitive unit. Right, so yeah, that would be from my side. And there's one thing, I don't know if you guys are, are having the same issue, but usually I have a, like, some allergy from buildings that are falling like this, and I always try to straighten up the verticals. And, and then, then I think in the metaverse, we're going to be seeing it in VR, and then no way things are going to be straightened up. And now, now I have the dilemma, like, should I straighten up my metaverse renders or not? Actually, uh, this is, yeah, it's so true. Uh, the thing is like, whenever, even when you're presenting in oh, yeah. VR, yeah, yeah, whenever you're yeah. presenting in VR, uh, I don't think you should straighten the edges because if you look down and it's straight edges, <laughs> it messes, it, then the, it's very, dist and it's, when you look up, it's also the same. So it's good to just keep it like this in, in like, yeah, like, that's exactly what the limit is. Yeah, because it's not an ArcVis project, it's a VR project. And I had, yeah. I know this issue. It's, it's really interesting <laughs> that it's changing suddenly the sacred rule of straightening the, the edges <laughs> in VR in visualization. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, David and jury for the comments. Uh, let's go to Juan Pablo. Let's see. Uh, so it's a low rise project. It's pretty much like this. This was on the verge of not being shortlisted, by the way, uh, just co complete honesty here. And I mean, I, I think it's cool. Like, I think pavilions are in general, like a nice idea for, for metaverse. And um, I think we're gonna see a lot of pavilions. So this is like one step closer to that. It's just the elements are not at the correct scale. And I think we all know that, especially uh, who do, the person, the person, the people who do my own, we know that this is not the correct scale for your frame. And uh, I'll, as you know, like I'll do, probably bring this to another level of resolution and then create the frame and it will be a completely different result. And that's the other comment. I like the other one better. It gives a little bit uh, more of a kind of, uh, you know, feeling here, yeah, this one. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, this one is more successful. And looking this one is like, it has uh, its positives. Uh, like as a nice place to get in the metaverse here. Yeah, I can imagine, uh, yeah, like cool things going up here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, modeling wise and like, and uh, proportion wise, you have to think a little bit more about your geometry and yeah, push, uh, push harder to, to learn how to control this. Otherwise, I mean, yeah, this is, it's nicer. Yeah, and I think maybe Irfan wants to comment, comment on this, but like regardless of scale, I think there is like very low control of the geometry itself. Uh, regardless of the software used, the geometry looks like it's out of control. Everything has different sizes and, and all, the, all the offsets are, are a bit weird. But one recommendation that I usually do when I'm doing some pavilions, I don't think it's a pavilion as like something that you can just put somewhere, but try to figure out what you can do with how it hits the floor, what happens on the floor. How people can move with it because this looks like just a one object sitting on a concrete block right uh, i think the intention is good the color palette is, is cool but yeah definitely a lot of work on the geometry 
Yeah, uh, the intention of the model was correct. Uh, like uh, that in a sense, like you can tell where it was going. Also the model is screaming out to be symmetric, right? Like, like it wants to be symmetric, but for some reason, like you haven't gone with two equal halves on either side, like that would already have refined your model to an extent, right? If you, and uh, picking up on Firas's point, uh, I completely agree. Like uh, uh, this thing, it could have been executed uh, a, a lot better, right? Uh, also the way it interfaces with the plot, right? That's super important. And that's what makes it extremely interactive, right? As a pavilion, otherwise it's just a sharing system, right? Uh, because over here, like it's okay to be a sharing system if it's in or like an accessory to a building, right? To accentuate a building going forward. But if this is your project, it has to be more than a sharing device, right? But uh, the visualization is cool. The fact that you took the effort to add the humans to show scale, right? Uh, the color palette, yes, is very successful. I think it's pretty cool. But uh, if you actually would just watch the video, like we, the way we detail the exoskeleton as well, it would already help you quite a bit in uh, making this a much more cleaner uh, geometry. But uh, good effort. Thank you. Thanks for your submission. All right. Jumping uh, to the next. Uh, let's see. So we did the first row, Christoph Galant. Let's see this. Oh, wow. All right. Let's Who's go ahead. That? Yeah, again, it's purple, so it, it could be the. <laughs> All right, going one by one. Oh, interiors too. Yeah, very nice. Looks like it's ready. To be loaded. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to say like a holistic approach. We see the interiors, the exterior, the color palette. Yeah. Uh, do you want to make comments? Can you go to the first oh, render? Yeah, should I yeah. stop on this? I think that's, this is that's, great. That's what, this one was also really nice, the, the way it reads the space, right? With the background. But yeah, I'll just. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, nothing to add. It, it, like the modeling is well done. It's controlled without being too controlled, which is nice. And it fits completely on the metaverse topic. So absolutely well done. It checks most of the boxes. Yeah, hey, it's very nice. I really like uh, the, uh, the dynamism of this kind of uh, uh, lower part. Um, how like the movement there are very dynamic. Uh, a lot, is, a lot uh, of things are going on there, but in the same time is controlled in a very uh, like precise way. And then on the upper part is kind of a relaxing the geometry. So I think it's a uh, really cool one. Congrats. And you, yeah. you, just, you have these kind of moments where you have this thing that like, is almost an anomaly, but then no, it's like nice, you know? And I think the bottom part is exactly that. Yeah, the, the design has like uh, like full marks for compositional value, right? Your sense of composition is really good. The way you are balancing out the form, right? Uh, even though it is a very fluid, very fluid form, it does not have a very uh, rigid shape, right? On the outside, like it's not particularly anything, but the composition is very nice. And I can see that you've taken also images from different angles. And that is something which is very difficult to balance in a structure, which is, this like this fluid right is that you when you are working towards that one money shot when you look at the structure or the the design from the back side or, or the left side sometimes it might look like shit you know like you're like you have that one shot which is clean and then you don't have anything else but like in this i think it's a it's a very holistic approach which is super nice and uh, i love how the exteriors also penetrate into the interiors right the language is carrying forward towards the inside and uh it's a very cool space to be in, right? Like if you would uh, put this into a into Unity or something and you actually go through it with a VR headset, I think it would be a very cool space to walk into. So fantastic attempt, very well done. And it has landscape too, like it has the surroundings yeah. as well. It's yeah. Like sitting in nowhere. Very nice. Fantastic. I'll move on to the next one. 
So this is also a good chance for all the jury to take some notes and things like that on the side, if anything to. Uh, this is Christoph, Khaled Omara. Let's go. Uh, it's two projects by Khaled again, one low rise, one high rise. So starting with the high rise. Uh, by the way, the reason it has a square on the bottom is this is a parcel size in Gamium land. So just, just to let you know. Um, and this is the low rise project that it did. Oh, so like there's two products for the same person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is the second time this is happening. Uh, so he did one low rise and then one high rise. All right. I don't know which one to stop on. So at least for, for the me, beginning. The, right. the profile. Yeah, yeah, the profile, the profile. Mm -hmm. Same here. Right. So I think that you you are more successful at doing the low rise, but I'm very happy that you took the challenge on because uh, uh, Khaled is very good on sub D in Rhino, and uh, it's very good that you took the challenge of doing working in Maya. And since you have already the culture of the curve, um, we can tell that you have that vocabulary already. You're just managing the tool, uh, and uh, that worked well. And you clearly have like a very good understanding of balance and and curves. And so far, you're High rise is still a bit uncontrolled, um, but the low rise is very successful. So it's a matter of um, continued testing on high rise, exactly what you're doing on low rise. So congratulations, comments. Yeah, I think the, the low rise is very successful. I mean, uh, look at this image, it's a very striking image and the curves are very beautiful. So yeah, con con congrats on the, on the wall rise one and the image, the, the views that you picked up are telling a lot. And even here, I like uh, how the geometry is evolving, uh, how it uh, works with the with the ground, with the podium, and how it's stepping uh, here a little bit uh, with the, this kind of terraces. And yeah, uh, the the wall rise is very successful. Regarding the the high rise, uh, uh, when I compare the both, uh, it's uh, still not uh, far. Uh, there, but it's a good starting for it also. And congrats that you uh, did both of them. This one especially is a very successful in my opinion. I, don't, I mean, quite well again, nothing much to add. Fantastic. So this was Khaled. Uh, thank you, Khaled. Uh, Utkarsh Verma. Let's go. Uh, All righty. So this is Utkarsh. And yeah, it looks, looks like the money shot. Very metaverse, right, I guess? Yeah, right. very metaverse and very Lords of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can't, uh, I'm not sure if you used Maya for this, no? Like, can you go back? That's what it looks like something else. Yeah, it's not Maya, right? We can yeah. check actually. Uh, Ifan, you have the Maya model. He turned. He must have turned in the model. So we asked them to turn in the model so we can check. It's not that hard. Okay, uh, but you're muted. You're, you're muted. muted. <laughs> we can see your <laughs> mouth moving. <but. laughs> the textures have been applied onto the onto a model which could be a low poly model uh, because the gestures yeah. are very like uh, very resonating with uh, a Maya workflow. Uh, right. So I used renderings, Blender rendering software to apply the yeah. texture on top of it, uh, on top of the surface. Okay, so it is a low poly Maya model. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's awesome. a low poly. Maya. Yeah, okay, cool. All right. Yeah, I like that it's flying, honestly. I mean, yeah. I like the idea that it's flying. It gives a lot to it. Um, maybe um, I'm not quite sure about... Uh, I mean, this is a little bit getting a little bit too much like uh, World of the Rings or kind of this kind of movies that Mariana mentioned. But uh, yeah, and when is uh, I don't mind the texture, but when you have so much texture on it, 
it's a little bit hard to assess uh, the design and the geometry what is actually like you know designed and what is actually the texture is given it's a little bit hard for me to to read uh, in these images uh, yeah i think it has a lot of a lot of sonography that overpowers the actual geometry itself the model especially here yeah i mean it's a strong it's a strong view i uh, yeah of course uh and it's a very strong uh, image and like yeah uh but yeah i mean maybe in my opinion the texture is a little bit overwhelming the design yeah so the so so well the the, the thing about maya is uh, even when you're just taking screenshots the models appear very beautiful is because of the simplicity of the surfaces right uh, it's uh, with a very few maneuvers and adding a few creases, you can make something which is super elegant, right? That is, that's something that you would want to present or want to retain even as part of your renders, right? Like you want to show the movements of your surface, all the folding, everything through uh, your renders. Uh, because like, if you see like, an, like, like, a, like a piece of paper, which you're going to be using for origami, which can almost be compared to what you're doing in Maya as well, right? You don't want a piece of paper that is heavily textured because that takes away from the shade and shadow that falls on those clean surfaces, right? You're going to start with something which is very plain, right? So in the same way for models like these, it's very beneficial for you to retain the overall simplicity of materials. So you can actually allow the light to enhance the movement of the lines or the overall topology of your geometry, right? So I think that is something that you should keep in mind for your models going forward. Also, but for this model, like for at least what we can see from your other renders as well, uh, there is there it, it, it does have a uh, three dimensionality to it, but your texture is taking away from the three dimensionality, at least in the visualizations. So that's something I'd be a little more careful about. Alrighty. Uh, so this was Utkarsh Pranav. Let's go Pranav. All right. Yes, it's this one. All right. Maybe I can start. Yeah. Is that from Maya? Um, Maya. Is this Maya? <laughs> the podium is Maya. I guess the, the model is Maya and then it comes back to... I think that it's a nice uh, project for an office, right? But uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a, for a reality, real kind of project. And um, the idea, you could have introduced a bit more variations. It's too repetitive and you don't have to be this repetitive because you're not building it. If you were building it, it's, yeah, it's better to be repetitive. If there's no gain in being repetitive, why would you do that? Um, so yeah, I would kind of like take more risks. It's well modeled, uh, but take more risks. Otherwise, it's an office project. Yeah, especially when you're going to the metaverse, right? Yeah. Please, Miros. I like the podium. Uh, honestly, quite a lot of the podium, and I think that uh, you should take what you gain in the podium and try to develop in in a vertical direction. So your tower. It's kind of like a continuation of the podium and it might come like a really strong composition. Uh, however, looking at this way, it's like uh, the tower and the podium doesn't, uh, don't really work together and the tower is quite heavy and uh, yeah, quite effective. But I think you can have another go and, and try to develop uh, this podium to, uh, to into a tower and to see what's going on. Ready. Next is Jaya Nivina. Um, all right, let's see this. Oh, 
Yeah, we can obviously see a Mariana influence here in this chat. But... I thought you opened my mistakes on Mariana work before. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. like... <laughs> Mariana, you found your way into my workshop as well. <laughs> <laughs> you found my way, yeah. Uh, uh, I, guess, I, guess, I guess it was, it's not a, it's not a ripoff for sure. Uh, it's highly it's not, influenced. No, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I has been my student for years, so okay, I'm yeah. even proud to see. Because uh, I remember yeah. Jaya like three years ago, uh, she was yeah. like a crazy original genius with a mesh that is not very controlled. But now your creativity is like finding some quality on the mesh, which is like very good to see. Uh, of course, there are some things like some curves that are not very correct um, and still needs a bit of refinement. For example, in this view, you could tell that it needs a little bit of refinement, especially on the ceiling. But it is great to see like how much you're like matching the quality of your modeling to your creativity. So well done for that. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, congrats on this project. Um, I think uh, it's a it's a nice composition, like how the podium like appears uh, on, here on the left, and then go down, and then go into the tower. I think it's a, it's a nice it's a nice move. Uh, yeah, definitely the curve have to be like a little bit more controlled, uh, but yeah, otherwise. Uh, it's an interesting project and your interior views are eye-catching, I would say. And uh, however, it you know, it's like you, in your interiors, you can see the, the very strong creativity, but you can also easily catch where the curse is doing things that you don't really want to do. So uh, yeah, but otherwise it's a, it's a nice project. Yeah, just a, a little bit, uh, like uh, Arik, if you could just go to the view, which is uh, showing the whole thing. Uh, uh, the, 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 this one, yeah, this one. What thoughts of here? This in this view, I think what uh, like uh, what really is missing is a little bit more interaction of your podium level with the tar, right? If somehow you could take the language and extend it into your Z axis as well, would really really take your model far, because at the moment it's looking like it is it's sort of. Uh, you know, it's it's coming to the tar, but it's not becoming the tar. You know, like I wish you would have just pushed that a little bit more, continued the white lines as a structural element, right? As a proper exoskeleton onto this volume that you have, the vertical volume that you have. I think that would really help your tar out. And the overall composition also would look really well. So yeah, that would be for uh, this project from me. All right, on to the next one. Uh, Stanuka, it's a, uh, it's a little bit unclear what it is, but second. Right. So maybe the first, I'll stop on the first one. I idea. actually prefer the second one because yeah? the okay. first one looks like an NFT object, but this one looks like yeah. an actual space that you actually, you want to try it out if you are in the metaverse. I'll probably want, I mean, it's an explosion of glossiness and an explosion of reflections. Uh, maybe you think it would be good to some elements not to be as reflective, but it's definitely a space that I would like to experiment. And there's, this is uh, like screens and yeah. special elements. And holograms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, when I saw the first one, I smiled, which is usually the reaction I like when I see new stuff. It seems like an interesting place to explore, but in the same time, in the way that uh, you apply all the texture and materials, it's very hard to understand and to orient what actually it is in this space. So uh, I think it definitely would help if you kind of uh, try to control a little bit the texture and the colors and give them a little bit of meaning, what do they mean and, uh, and you know, like to help us and everybody else in the metaverse to explore this space because otherwise, you know, it's something cool, but you are lost there and you don't really know what to do. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 it has something. All right. Next one then. Uh... This is Benjamin Sebastian. Let's see. All right. One. 
then two. This one. The top. This one. All right. Which one do I stop at? I guess it's it all explains the project. But yeah, uh, think, yeah, I'll just keep scrolling through. I think it has like good moments. The overall not so successful, but it has good moments, which is good. And uh, I saw also some posts you did, and you focus on those good moments, and that's great. So there's like some shots on perspective on human level that work well, but then the overall is a bit like it. Uh, not well integrated. I think it's a good start. Uh, the you it seems like you are still searching in a, uh, the way to uh, to develop it. Uh, you have succeed to find some kind of interesting moves and stuff, and you have like you know vocabulary of movements that. Uh, you may want to explore further more and to develop as a composition. Yeah, I would say it's a great place to start. It's a great starting point. Yeah, obviously some some people are just starting with, with Maya in general. Uh, uh, so, yeah. For so first time, it's pretty cool, actually. Some of the attempts, like you can generally tell it's a beginner and the effort is quite a lot. So yeah, congratulations on that to everybody. So... We have this one as well. It's a bit unclear. It's a bit dark, but but yeah, uh, actually we added these on our own. Uh, we took the model, like some screenshots from the model so it could uh, be clearer. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is crazy complex. Yeah. yeah. I'm usually a big fan of keeping like the mesh wires on. Okay, yeah. Right, right. But this is really cool. I go to the first one. Yeah. Yeah, I think here is a great example of what the textures can actually do, right? I mean, yeah. in, you know, I mean, here you can understand what is actually, and the other one you are quite lost. So I think that. Uh, it, it really helps to understand how you, you know, have to present and to uh, show your your effort and your your work because otherwise you might work like a lot, but in the end of the day, uh, you know, uh, it's not easy to be uh, uh, your work to be assessed. So I think uh, it's clear that a lot of things are going uh, on here and a lot of work is done. However, I think that it's a little bit out of control. And uh, yeah, mm. it's a great effort, but it has, uh, in my opinion, to be quite more controlled, uh, kind of uh, simplified. Yeah, the rendering can really add way too much ambiguity to a design. Sometimes the ambiguity is good, right? You want to show a conceptual sketch, right? Like uh, it's sort of an, like, like, like an idea. But like uh, in this case, you almost took yourself out with your render, you know, like. <laughs> Like, because we were not able to read the project at all. Like we had to go through the file to extract the idea or the overall impression of it. So yeah, I might just be a little bit more careful with that. Just gonna jump to the next one. So this was Pranaita. Using some axles. Yeah, you guys can start if you want to comment. Yeah, I think the close, the uh, closer views here are way stronger than the overall views because uh, um, there is like nice curve and nice details that are done here that we can see like in this kind of close up uh, views. Uh, over, uh, otherwise, the composition I don't think is that much successful, but you did some nice moves like that we can see here. I like I like the facade. I think it's very clean and sharp. Like uh, the curves are very successful. I don't see any jagged curve, and that's that's a very good start to model clean. And this is extremely clean. But uh, I also think that the overall, for some reason, you chop them 
and you didn't have to chop them. They could be like fully uh, like oval, like fully elliptical without chopping them on the sides. That I know that that was like a statement, but it's not working for the model. But apart from that, the facade is really clean. I think that that's very similar to the exercise that Erfan was doing. So I can tell maybe it's uh, his or her uh, first attempt in Maya, which is, uh, as Maya said, like the facade is really cool and, and the attempt of the composition can be definitely improved. Um, uh, pretty well, like after the overall tutorial, right? Uh, so basically the intention behind uh, specifically doing that module uh, for you guys was for you to understand that Maya can be very controlled as well, right? For you can make very specific, very measured quantities and very uh, clean gestures and then make it look dynamic. But what you've what you've gone one step ahead from there is try to make your own composition, which is really good, right? So I think over here, what would be really essential for you is to spend some time in the overall composition. You have the technique, right? So that is something that was very successful. It's just, you need to like push the composition of the overall a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll have a way better model. All right, sharing again. Let's go. Renita, Anjum, all right. So oh. here's one. Like, which one was the deliver delivery? Uh, it's the middle thing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll I'll go on the other shots as well. So. Okay. Nice. I think, I think it's really cool. Like I like that you you completely brought a new typology to architecture, and I really appreciate that since it's metaverse and you're like bridging them on the top, bridging them on the bottom. It's like a, a different typology, and uh, and it really fits really well in this metaverse kind of vision. And um, I think maybe the towers are slightly too over controlled on the top. You might have too many edge loops on the top. So I would get rid of some of them just so the mesh flows a bit better and it feels like it's blooming a bit more. Uh, it's like slightly over controlled. But apart from that, like um, I like that you brought something new to Towers and uh, so well done. Yeah, congrats on the originality of the idea. I think it's done nice. Um, maybe a little bit too much details here and there, but otherwise it's nice. And also, again, I would do like a little bit variation in the tower height. So it's like, not like a wireframe of the square, like if I exaggerate, but it's kind of more dynamic composition, but otherwise I think it's very cool one. All right. Cool, uh, let's go with Johnny Felix. You guys can see it, right? Yeah, it's these two. Uh, yeah. Go back to the first one, maybe it's better. Yeah, sure. Please, guys, go ahead. Yeah, as a politics, uh, I would say like uh, um, there is something to this kind of transi transition to, you know, like uh, the podium to the tower and how, let's say, the, the tower kind of uh, were in the middle. Uh, and I mean, I, there is an idea which I think it's worth to mention. Uh, however, I think uh, the execution uh, needs uh, quite uh, more work. Uh, to be able to, you know, to uh, present your idea in a in a stronger way, and yeah, that would be my I, I wish you could have taken a bit more advantage of uh, doing something that is not for real construction. Like, of course, these tentacles are definitely not going to be built, but this idea of stacking slabs and then so controlled opening on the top because, like, you don't want to cantilever too much, and it's very controlled for what you are doing. So. 
uh, you could have had even more fun and, and even appreciate it be more like the software and, and the topic. Cool. Um, on to the next one. Let's see. This is R. Ahmad. By R, I mean the order. His name is Ahmad. <laughs> what? what did you say? No, I, when you see this is like the order R, uh, it's not his ah. name. It's, uh, yeah, okay. All right, so that's one thing. I like the composition. I like that he took, like Yoshi took full advantage of the square and it's like a composition, like a proper composition. And it's also like well modeled. S some curves here and there, they might need some fix. Like you can tell right now from this halo that you have that the curves are a bit like uh, not working. You just need to fix them a bit better. Uh, I'm not a fan of the tower, but I'm a fan of, it, of your podium. I think you have some uh, strong moments. Uh, and I mean, overall, if I look at this composition, I like the approaches, how, uh, you know, how you use like the green part, the hardscape, the landscape, uh, the light, uh, the pavilion the tower. I mean, the elements are there. The intention is there. Uh, I think, however, the execution, the curves are a little bit wobbly here and there, and also, it, you have like uh, too much of everything. Maybe you have to reduce the amount of the light, the amount, uh, you know, the amount of the strips and stuff like that, and it would benefit uh, your model. Yeah. yeah it's really cool how, how like the, the whole square is actually one project and not just something thrown there. Really cool. Okay, you don't mind your tar. It's actually pretty. It's pretty okay. That are like uh, if you just fix some curves in and around, I think it would work out pretty well. But your podium is definitely more successful. I think. I think like in this particular view, the overall composition is pretty nice, right? Uh, I wish you would have terminated your tar at least at the tip a little bit more uh, closed in instead of fanning out, right? Probably that takes a little bit away from your composition, but uh, otherwise it's a very very good effort. I think you've done a really good job. So we have four left to go through. Uh, Bruno didn't give us any visualizations, so we just took some snips from the model. Uh, it was good enough to for us to do that effort for him. So, so this was uh, one. You can see the project. And yeah, I guess this explains it the best. Yeah, I think in this view, I, I really like the dynamism and you can see like the, let's say the uh, creative and building power, how he developed uh, his design. Like it has direction and it has like uh, orientation to it. So I think the idea is cool. And if uh, he, you know, play a little bit more with the proportion of the, yeah, the, the elements, uh, it might go very successful, like a uh, few creases here, decreases the the thickness here and there, uh, and it might go uh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting already, but it might go way better. I think he played too safe, like he's not here. Uh, he's not on, in this presentation, but he acted like an architect of the real uh, life and then real practice, and there's no need. like. For example, I really like his landscape, uh, the bubbles ones. I might even like steal it for a little because it looks super cool, like your landscape. It's different, it's like bubbly and the canopies are also nice. And then the building is like a building that could be built and maybe we already have it built. In the it's time. Yeah, interesting. For me, it looks a bit too shy, to be honest. 
Yeah, actually, the, I think that's the craziest thing with moving to the metaverse is the mindset that you have to kind of reinstall your whole program in your head, where how you approach metaverse projects, which is different than real projects, right? But still yeah. design. So the thing is, like, this is something maybe we can discuss later, but th there's something about realizing projects that usually when you're designing for a real world, you take your design into like a whole set of tracks where it tra translated from a design to a built building. And then in the metaverse is uh, like this technical phase is actually how you prepare your model to go inside unity or unreal or whatever you're using mm -hmm. and then i think like there could be some tricks but still in the design phase i think there's a lot more adventure to be discovered here yeah like yeah. even in real life projects there's no i feel like there's no need to restrict yourself so much before that technical process I because agree. it's the right you you have to be creative and then you restrict restrict yourself when it gets to that point um <laughs> I don't know. But it's usually what is, what is hard in the real world is kind of, it becomes kind of hard in the metaverse as well. So, you know, yeah, because if you have like a crazy, heavy and complex geometry, and then you spend like a weeks cleaning it and, you know, <laughs> optimizing it like, to go, exactly. to be able to go in under real or unit or whatever. So yeah. Um, yeah. it's still good to think about this because Absolutely. otherwise, you know. Yeah. Uh, like, it's like, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Please, please, yes. No, no, my, my, your only constraint is, is, geomet is geometry. And then this means that you technically have no constraint. I mean, yeah. Well, I guess the structural engineers of the metaverse will be the model, opt the optimizers yeah, yeah. of the model. Yeah, where people yeah, they, they, yeah. <laughs> okay, they will have to optimize the model so it doesn't crash your computer. Mesh builders. Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. Yeah. And then we have to talk to the developers like, no, this is possible. They come back to <laughs> say, no, your model is too high poly. <laughs> you, you're joking, but this is exactly how it happens. I'm not joking yeah. at all. That's no, exactly we're, yeah, we're experiencing this one now, honestly. Exactly. Like, Me too. Uh, I'm so, working with, like, with a metaverse company and the engineer, software engineer, like he's the one that says yes and no. And he, exactly. for example, he says no to flying things. Yeah. Opinion. Oh, okay. Okay. That's bad. Because okay. they are complex. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're too complex for metaverse. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the civil engineers here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. civil engineers. Yeah. We will we will still have those guys in the metaverse too. The police. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the police. Yeah. The restrictive. Stuff. <laughs> All right. So this is Andreas Kalis. I think it's cool. The overall is cool. The the Maya could be a little bit more polished, like the curves. I, you might have too many edge loops, and that's why it's not floating too much, like just technical part of it. I'm pretty sure that if, if I could see your edges, I'm pretty sure you have too many edges happening. So that's why your twisting is like eh, twisting, but not so fluid. But then again, I, it's really cool when they took like the uh, the square and they did the composition on the square. I think everyone should have done that. And this is the like the the maximum example of that. He's just rippling from the square in and then twisting. So well done for that. And well, using really the parcel properly. Yeah, it's really cool when there's a parcel. I think this is one of the successful podiums as well, from my point of view. And and I really like the the insect finishing on the top. Like it really looks like some insect there. <laughs> looks like like out, a yeah. I think the podium is. In my opinion, it's way more successful than the tower itself. Yeah. yeah, congrats on the podium. It's quite nice that everyone's able to actually, at some degree, integrate your tower with the podium, right? Uh, like in most of the projects, it is part of a of a whole, because a lot of times what happens is like you end up de designing two as two products, and then you put it one over the other, and then you know you don't have a composition; you just have two pieces. But in, in, in the exercise, I think everyone has been pretty successful in uh, the overall uh, integration of the two, right? Also in this design, like just a little bit more of massaging of the overall volume will take it a long way. If you see your last image, right? Where it's like a super thin pinch point and then it bulges out. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, if you spend a little bit more time with this, it'll be pretty cool. But yeah, a lot of technique. And crazy amount of edge loops for sure. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot. Because there is a good possibility that you might complicate the model a bit too much, even for yourself. 
because it does happen that like you know like it, you the, you make it less maneuverable the more uh, complexity you keep adding to the model but i think the best way to go about it would be the simplest model with the com the most complex uh, sort of visualization right i think that would be the way to go the lesser geometry but uh, the impression should be very uh, very elegant and uh, should look complex so but yeah, in this case, yeah, I'm sure it's a bit difficult for you to manage the model now, especially. But very cool design. All right. So, uh, Ooh, we have a, we have Dalia, a did a, Dalia did a PDF of it instead of a picture. So I'll just roll through. <clears throat> Thank you too, Dalia. We're, we got your message here. All right. Um, so I'll just stop somewhere. Anyway. Yeah, well, if I have to start on like, I think mm, I appreciate the effort to give us like uh, uh, some kind of inter interesting composition and uh, more intricate uh, shape and geometry. Um, however, uh, like I think uh, it needs quite a lot of attention to the bridges uh, and also like uh, to the overall shape of the of the model. I mean, it is like a, a kind of promising idea, but uh, still not there in my, in my opinion. Like it's successful in a way that yeah, there's a dialogue here. So there's some poetics in it uh, and that's successful. Like there's a story, but then the mesh, because you were doing the striations and your bridges became as thin as the striations and we can see that. And when they are too thin, they look like they are not habitable for an avatar or for us or whatever. Um, they are too thin and too fragile. So I don't know if they are ornaments or are we meant to leave them like to actually navigate inside them. So I would um, bridge them and then do the striation, not the other way around. Not do the striation, then bridge. It's like bridge them and then take care of the person. But I'll go back to low polling, definitely. Ready. So the last one of them all is, all right, so let's see. Okay, yeah, this is, it's pretty, di uh -huh. pretty different, <laughs> yeah. Can you go back? I'm not sure yeah, if yeah, I yeah. I'll just go back, yeah. Let's It would have helped if we had like a human scale somewhere here or like an interior shot since you have so much detail, you could do like something inside. Yeah, exactly. That's probably it's really cool. One. Ah, there you go. But probably if you, right. if you do like perspectives from human eye, it will be like really cool. It has a lot of potential for great interior views. Mm -hmm. uh, but you didn't, so it looks like an object. It looks like a game for like, hand size. I like that, that those houses on the top. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like a stacking exercise that I, I see like here and there is done quite successfully. You, uh, you know, it is like this kind of mo modular uh, structure. Um, but like a design design wise, I think it's a little bit too repetitive. And uh, yeah, and I think uh, that the uh, Close of views would be much stronger than the overall shape. It would be really cool if this particular design was subjected to a gradient, right? Where yeah. uh, modules go from big to small or have some sort of a gradation in between sizes. Also, I think that would be uh, very, very 
helpful for your overall design, right? I think in this case, what would be uh, really nice is if you start skeletal at the base and go more solid at the top. So it becomes more like a pavilion at the bottom where you can sort of navigate through and towards the upper part of the design, you could have more habitable spaces, right? Or more covered spaces. So you reduce the porosity. So I think uh, that's something that you could look into is uh, yeah, how you can add gradients to this sort of a, this particular design. That view is better, no? Because it gives a little bit more of uh, kind of variations what is going on. Like we yeah. have a little bit uh, like, uh, you know, in the middle, some kind of uh, movement, then in the periphery, another thing. So I think this is a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, the top the view has like a hierarchy, and then in perspective, it's just a bit chaotic. But you could tell that he did it in top view and then just went along with it in, in, in yeah, perspective. Yeah. So this is why I think the top view is the most successful of your mm -hmm. work. Okay, so that was it. Uh, I will have to kindly ask the jury to open up their she uh, sheets, and uh, we can just I'm gonna open up each project one by one, so we can be reminded of them. Then actually, Eric, voting, uh, they have evaluated yeah. everyone already? already. Yes, we have Done. the we results too. Cool. Yes. Uh, can you? I think it would be cool just to see. Yeah. Um, um, just things yeah. Maybe if you want to change it, like just a quick, quick review. Of the project. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, so we had uh, Abdel Manayam. One, two, three. All right. And then Juan Manuel. Uh, Very nice. All right. Uh, Armine. And this is our way of thanking all of you for submitting in your projects, by the way. So we're just showcasing them one more time. Yeah, it's like the credits so, are rolling on screen yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for submitting all of these amazing projects. And yeah, for four days, this is amazing. Amazing like, in four days, yeah. 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 For beginners, especially. Yeah. Also for the tutor, that means that it taught well, and that's great. Yeah. Like, oh. We can tell that it taught well. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> It's cool that we have generations of DRL over here right now. <laughs> I believe. Yeah, it's it's you, then me, then me, you know, all DRLs. But who do we have from the students? Do we have DRLs? Like currently? Uh, no, I don't think anyone from the students is DRL. I'd be surprised if they are. Uh, that was Masataka, David Tesari, uh, with two projects. Uh, well, we went with the Tower More. Yeah, this yeah. is a very cool project. Also, like some of you have really, really good visualization skills, yeah? Like yeah. It's, it, some of the renders are very cool. Like I'm sure like you guys haven't spent like an obscene amount of time on it, but like uh, I can imagine what you guys would come up with if you actually had that kind of uh, time to spend per visualization. It's very nice. Juan Pablo, with the pavilion, and uh, Christoph Galant with the purple tower. Purple pink tower. Looks like a fat dancing song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fat yeah, this one's like ready. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, it's yeah, ready, ready, ready. Yeah. It somehow still looks structural too. You know, it has this yeah, columns going reason. about. Yeah. Uh, Khaled. Again, two projects. One was the tower, and then we also had the low rise, which we went with more. It has a bit of mirror, not mirror. The colors, the gold. Yeah. I like I guess, it. Well I guess some of the <laughs> participants, the participants knew who was coming for jury, so they're trying to appeal to you, maybe. So there are there are, there are sprinkles of elements everywhere. Some discreet, some not so discreet, like, yeah, it's cool. By the way, Khaled uh, recently got into UN studio as, a, as an intern, oh, so. Oh, uh, many, many congratulations for that. UN studio, yeah. super, yeah. Then we have Utkarsh Verma with the Lord of the Rings project. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Utkarsh Verma, where was it? Ah, Jay Pranav. 
with the repeti repetitive tower, the amazing podium. Super epic. Uh, yeah. Um, where was that? Uh, Geneva. Cool. So really if you if you want to make final changes to your project, uh, to your votes, you can <laughs> do it. Uh, so, uh, Sutanuka, uh, this is time for you to review. All right, so we had this reflective project by Sutanuka. And uh, Benjamin Sebastian, we have the golden effort. And Kong Fob. Let's see, what was this one? All right, yeah, the complex project. <laughs> yeah, uh, right, right for like, yeah, it is actually uh, a really complex project. <laughs> we have Pranaita Medam with the modular facades. Just for you to remember, and then Anjum. Uh, with the four towers and That's finally <laughs> Johnny Felix you could go ahead and build this <laughs> <laughs> that's true this is this, this looks so cool. and... <laughs> it actually looks like a construction model which is very cool yeah yeah, yeah. we have a really actually we have a tower that we showed in the presentation that looks very similar in terms of the spaghetti yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, then where was I? Ah, Ahmad, with the podium and his tower. All right, and Bruno Charles with Hi. with the bubbles on the landscape that Mariana is gonna steal. And <laughs> you have to stay tuned for that one. <laughs> you you promised Mariana, so I mean, Everyone, right? <laughs> by the way, Arik, did you cover Johnny Felix? Uh, I yes. think I did. Yes, I thought yeah, okay, it was yeah, the yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally did. Uh Andreas Callis mm -hmm. with the square podium. All right. And then uh, Dalia and Rohan. All right. Dalia is with the three towers. And Rohan, last one, yeah, with the modular housing type of uh, composition. Cool. So we have them all. Arik, you're quite the MC, yeah? <laughs> we, love, we love the presentation from your side. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, should run, I, I, I should run uh, boxing matches and stuff next time. <laughs> <laughs> the champion. All right. Let's go. Okay. So, yeah, we have them all. We have all the votes in house. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now with the second uh, line of uh, revision, we have some interesting result variation. I'm changed. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> so like actually, the, the third place oh, is yeah. shared by two people. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys want to do this one more time? I can go. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think uh, now the participants will hate me for going one more time. Because, exactly, uh, because you're, I was you're winning. You <laughs> but I totally second the decision. I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's, it's well worked out now. I think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, if uh, you have a few more do-overs, might complicate matters a little bit. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, that's, <laughs> all right, no more. So, yeah. five more seconds if you want to make any changes, and then Vamps is going <laughs> to share this, and then Vamps is going to share the screens, all right? Yes. <laughs> all right, five, four, I'll do it with a thicker voice, three, yeah. two, <laughs> one. <laughs> all right, go. one, go, all right, Boom. let's see it. Oh, Here my God, go, there we go. Uh, first up, we have um, Christoph Galland. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And second, we have David Tassari. Congratulations, okay. David. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> nice. And third Hi. is uh, where we have Armine, and we also have Khaled Omara. 
it's shared by right. two people. Yes. All right. Yeah. We're gonna have to share Fantastic. that one. Fantastic. I guess. <laughs> Uh, Christoph, really like your background as well, yeah? Yeah. Actually, Christoph's background is thought uh, free on Futurely. <laughs> yeah. You can go ahead and sign up. <laughs> you can make his background <laughs> yours. That's super. That's so cool. All right. Yeah. So we have all the uh, scores in. Christoph. Um, who was that? David? Is the second yeah. one? Yes, yeah, yes. David. Oh, yeah, it's, it's broken down here. Okay, okay. Yeah, Christoph, David, Khaled, and Armina. All congrats to you. Congratulations, uh, guys. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I hope the rest of the participants found the whole process of voting uh, satisfactory. And I hope that you find it fair. I personally certainly do. I think best people won. <clears throat> and uh, also, please... All four of you expect an email from us uh, with the rest of the instructions. So we can ask you for your uh, wallet IDs and things like that. If you don't know how to set up a crypto wallet, uh, you please, we're, we can just go online and uh, on a Zoom call and we can help you set it up. And uh, apart from that, uh, we would love to ask everybody to come on video so we can take a big selfie before we part our ways. And uh, one more time, congratulations. It was kind of unexpected for the third position to be two people, but amazing. Yeah. I guess very well yeah. deserved. Congratulations to everyone, yeah, for this. I think the effort was phenomenal because considering the time constraint, I think it was very, very well done. I hope we didn't intrude too much onto anyone's submissions, right? Like someone commented that they had three submissions in the week. Shit, that was lethal. <laughs> but uh, despite of that, like, I think the effort is really, really good. And we have a really, really amazing panel. I think like I did to really, really thank them for coming on, right? These are like probably the best Maya tutors and designers that there are right now, right? So I think there's a lot to learn right here from the, the entire jury, like everybody. And we also discovered a new skill set from Rx. So we'll be seeing him doing commentaries and voiceovers more often. <laughs> <laughs> I that never was, thought I'm good at this. I just thought I was completely yeah, that was pretty, like, Very impressive. But yeah, <laughs> thanks. Thanks to everybody. And uh, yeah, and definitely thanks to Gamium for organizing this. I think without that wouldn't be possible. So thanks a lot, guys. And, uh, please, everyone, come on video so we can take a big selfie. Uh, yeah, I know you, we didn't tell you this, that you're going to come on video so, and you know probably don't have makeup or anything, but do it anyways. We'll, we'll Photoshop you. It's cool. <laughs> Go ahead, Alex. Where's your makeup? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah any, right. any touch-ups will be in post-production, so don't worry about that. <laughs> don't, don't worry about <laughs> it's that. It's going to go through a layer of post, so... Congrats one more time and congrats to everybody who submitted actually, um, because I guess you learned a lot from it. Of course, it's faded, yeah. All right, uh, who's doing the selfie? Who, ha who has a camera? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's just a snip. Oh, but, uh, okay. Done. All right, awesome. that was done. Awesome, everyone. Uh, so that's that for today. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, we're going to announce the winners on, uh, on social media and everywhere. So uh, I guess we know everybody's um, Instagram handles, but if not, comment them on the chat so we don't miss you out. Apart from that, uh, congrats once again, and thank you so much for being with us. Thank you to the three jury panels for dropping by. Uh, I think more than voting, it was your feedback that just made this whole thing super valuable, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just, it, it's, instead of just voting, we're giving people how they, uh, ideas upon how they can improve. So thank you so much for that. You guys are the best. And um, thanks to all the students for learning and being a part of the Futurely family. Yeah, thanks for the future for the invite. It was amazing and great job by the tutor, the organizers, and a big applause to the students for the great work. It was quite fun and enjoyable for And, and uh, good luck to Gamium with their metaverse coming up. We can yeah. see all of these projects in the metaverse one day. Yeah, that's going to be super cool to see the projects, yeah?
Yeah. yeah, that's always like I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna be reaching out to some of you guys because I think there's a lot of really nice work that can be taken to a lot of nice places. It's a good start. Yeah, let's make a futurely district or something there. Uh, yeah, you, oh, you, you don't have to. You don't have to agree. Don't worry. <laughs> like, uh... Sorry, so you don't have. You don't have to agree. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, now, okay, now it's on recording, you know? It's on recording now, so you said it. I was just confused, like, how did he get a spoiler? Uh, <laughs> right, we'll, we'll, we'll cut this part out from the recording. Uh, or not, we won't. Okay. <laughs> 450 uh, people get access to yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. Yeah. All, right, all right, guys. See you soon. Okay, everyone. And, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Uh, have the Thank you, guys. Have the rest of amazing rest of the weekend, everyone. Awesome. Bye. Bye. See you next workshop. <laughs>